Tatum's Crochet Creations and for today's tutorial I thought I'll show you how to crochet this cute little jellyfish keychain. Isn't he just so adorable? So you can use whatever colours you want in this tutorial. I used um, Crocus I believe is the purple and um, Fuchsia I think or hot pink. I can't remember the colours exactly. Um, but yeah, so I made this cute little guy for the tutorial. Isn't he just super cute? So you can obviously make as many tentacles as you want. Many of the tiny ones or the curly ones. It's all personal preference and you can sew them in any way you want to. This is just the order that I have sewn them on. Um, but yeah, so let's get started on how to crochet this cute little jellyfish keychain, shall we? let's get started okay guys so to get started with this cute little jellyfish keychain these are the materials that we'll be needing so i'll be using this charity double knit pool skein yarn so this is um 100 acrylic let me get my camera to focus it is 100 acrylic it is 233 meters or 256 yards it is 100 grams it recommends a four millimeter crochet hook and I'll be using the color Tiger Cerise as well as what is this color? Crocus. Okay, so those are the two colors that I'll be needing. They're both the same weight yarn, the same, the same type of yarn. Um, yeah. Okay, so they're both the same type of yarn, and with that, I'll be using a two millimeter crochet hook. This is just to get my, my stitches nice and tight and small um, and then with that you'll be needing a stitch marker because you'll be working in the round, um, a tapestry needle or darning needle, a pair of scissors, a pair of jewellery pliers, you'll also be needing some pillow stuffing and then I also have a blunt pair of scissors to push in that pillow stuffing just to help with that. And then I have some 0.5 millimeter safety eyes here, as well as the back to those safety eyes. And then I also have my keychain, as well as my jump ring. And off to the side, I have my hot glue gun here, which I will use to just secure those safety eyes to the to the jellyfish a lot more you know just to secure the eyes a lot more um so yeah that is it for the materials let's get started with with crocheting this cute little jellyfish keychain okay so to get started i'm going to use the purple color as um as the body of my jellyfish and then yeah i'll use the 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 hot pink and the purple for the tentacles um i feel like it will just create like a uh, i don't know i feel like it will be more of like a like a jellyfishy type of look i guess um okay so to get started you just want to grab your yarn and we are going to form a magic ring okay so to do a magic ring, we're going to take our yarn, we're going to wrap it around our two fingers once, twice, and then the second time, sorry, the third time, we are going to cross over to form an X. Yeah, so we're going to cross over to form an X, and we are going to insert our crochet hook under those first two loops, pick up that, that second loop, and then we're going to yarn over and do a chain one just to secure our magic ring. Okay. So now after we've completed our magic ring, we are going to place six single crochets into this, this magic ring. So you're going to insert, okay, so to do a single crochet, let me not jump the gun here. <laughs> okay, so to do a single crochet, we're going to insert into that magic ring. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all two of those loops. Again, you're going to insert into that magic ring, then yarn over, pull through. You'll have two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. That's two, three, 
Ou... Five... And six. Okay, so we all need to do six single crochets into that magic ring. And excuse my horrible knock in my yarn. Ew, that's disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we need to have six single crochets so we can count. So we count these little Vs. Okay, as you can see, the little Vs there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so we do have six. Now to close up this magic ring, what you'd want to do is take your tail end pull on your tail end and you'll see uh, one loop being pulled in so that loop that got pull pulled in you'd want to grab that and pull that down towards you and then you'll see that other loop disappears and now to get rid of this loop you're going to take your tail end and pull on your tail end and that should close up um, or that should get rid of that other loop okay and now we are going to do an increase into each stitch around. So for round two, we are going to do an increase into each stitch around. Okay, so you're going to find your first single crochet. And you're going to do an increase. And an increase is essentially just two single crochets into the same stitch. That is basically what, um, what an increase is. So again, in the first round, you would have had... Um, you would have had six single crochets and now because we are going to be doing an increase into each stitch around placing two single crochets into each stitch around our stitch count should have increased up to 12 single crochets by the end of that round by the end of the second round okay so again you're just going to place two single crochets into each stitch around and your stitch count should have gone up from 6 up to 12 by the end of round 2. Okay, so that is what round 2 should be looking like. Now we're going to move on to round three. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet into the first stitch. So find your first stitch and do one single crochet into there. Replace your stitch marker. And then we're going to do an increase into that next stitch. Okay, so, so into that next stitch, we're going to do now an increase. And that is the repeat pattern for this round. So we'll place one single crochet into the next stitch and then an increase into the following stitch. And again, an increase is just two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, so again, one single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase. And then one single crochet into the next stitch and then an increase oopsie and then an increase and then one single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase And by the end of this third round, your stitch count should have gone up from 12 up to 18 by the end of this third round. Oh gosh, I'm really like losing my stitches here. Okay, so one single crochet and then an increase. Yeah. And a great way to know if you have increased correctly is that if you start with one single crochet at the beginning of the, of the round, you will end on an increase and vice versa. If you start the round with an increase, you should end with one single crochet. And all of your increases should line up with each other. So once I do this next round, I will show you exactly what I mean by that. So we can remove our stitch marker. And for this next round, we're going to place one single crochet into the, the next two stitches. Okay, so that's one, 
and then replace your stitch marker two and then we'll do an increase into the next stitch so again it's one single crochet into the next two stitches so that's one two and then an increase And then one single crochet into the next two stitches one and two and then an increase and you will repeat that pattern all the way around and your stitch count should have gone up from 18 up to 24 by the end of this fourth round I was meant to place an increase there. <laughs> so that's also a way that I had figured out that I skipped an increase. So this is what I mean by the increases line up. So you can see the increases are sitting like directly on top of each other. If you can see there, they're literally sitting directly on top of each other. Okay, so again, it's one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then an increase, one single crochet into the next two stitches, and then an increase into that last stitch. Yeah, that's what it should be looking like so far. Moving on to the next round, you're going to remove your stitch marker, then we're going to place one single crochet into the first three stitches. So as you can see by each round that we that we go up and we increase the number of stitches between in between those increases so we started off with six then an increase into each stitch around then an increase one single crochet increase in the next round it was increase two single crochet increase two single crochet if it makes any sense now this round it'll be three single crochet and then an increase okay so again it's one single crochet into the first three stitches so that's three and then an increase and again one single crochet into the next three stitches and then an increase and you will just repeat this pattern all the way around placing one single crochet into the next three stitches and then an increase into the next stitch all the way around and your stitch count should have gone up from 24 up to 30 by the end of this round Yeah, and again ending on an increase since we started with one single crochet and again your stitch count should have gone up from from 24 up to 30 by the end of this round okay so now this is the end of the increase rounds so what we're going to do is from rounds six to round seven so that is three rounds Sorry, that is two rounds, my bad. So for the next two rounds, we are going to place one single crochet into each stitch around with no increases and no decreases. So it's just one single crochet in each stitch around and we will keep the same stitch count as 30 single crochets. So just, just placing one single crochet into each stitch around for the next two rounds. Okay, make sure you turn your work um, the right side 
out because normally with crochet once you start doing one single crochet in each stitch around and building up those walls if it makes any sense it naturally wants to like cave in um, with the right side towards us or like the right side um, with the wrong side out like pushing out if it makes any sense and um, so you need to uh, push your work this way so that the right side of the work is facing up yeah and the wrong side is being pushed in if that makes any sense I hope I'm making sense so the wrong side is a lot more bumpier and the right side is like nice and neat you can see those crisp stitches yeah so that's just like a little tip out there for all the beginners who are potentially watching this video yeah, so again you're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds and I have one more round to do after this one. Yeah. So now after doing uh, one single crochet in each stitch around for those next two rounds, we should now have a total of six rounds, sorry, seven rounds. So if we count from the center, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is correct. Now moving on to the next round, we're going to do a decrease round. So we're going to place one single crochet into the first three stitches. So that's one. Two, three, and now we're going to do a decrease. So now a decrease, we're going to do an invisible decrease. Okay, so we're going to essentially take two of these stitches and make it into one stitch. Like how we did with an increase where we took one stitch and made it into two stitches. We're now going to take two stitches and decrease it into one stitch. So how you're going to do that is we're going to do an invisible decrease. It's called an invisible decrease. So we're going to take a hook, we're going to insert it under that front loop of the stitch. So you can see that V there. So you're going to insert your hook underneath that front loop of that first V. Then you're going to twist your hook down and insert your hook into that next V, into the next front loop of that V stitch, of the next single crochet stitch. You'll have two loops on your hook. It is essentially the two front loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet. And that is what an invisible decrease looks like. So it looks like a single crochet within like a chain stitch. That's kind of like what it looks like. Okay, so you'll just repeat that around. Placing one single crochet into the next three stitches. So that's one, two, three. Then again, an invisible decrease. So find your next two stitches and find those the front loops of those two stitches like that. And then yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two to finish up your single crochet. And again, it is one single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then a decrease. So again, go into the front loop of that next stitch, twist your hook down, and insert your hook into the front loop of that next stitch. Then yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. Again, one single crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one, sorry, into the next three stitches. That's one, two and three. And then a decrease. So again, underneath that front loop of the next stitch, twist your hook down and insert underneath the front loop of that next stitch then yarn over pull through those two loops then yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet yeah and again 
By the end of this round, your stitch count should have gone down from 30 back down to 24 stitches after doing this increase, sorry, this decrease round. And again, to do an invisible decrease, you're going to go underneath those front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two again. Again, one single crochet in the next two stitches. Sorry, in the next three stitches, sorry. My mind is going crazy tonight. I don't know what's going on with me. <laughs> okay, and then again, decrease the last two stitches together. Okay, so that's what it should be looking like now. Okay, and then again, for the next two rounds, sorry, for the next three rounds, yeah, so for the next three rounds, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around with no increases and no decreases, just again, one single crochet into each stitch around. Okay, so now after completing um, three rounds of no increases and no decreases, this is what it should be looking like now. Um, so now what we're going to do is we are now going to slip stitch to the beginning of this round. So to slip stitch, we're going to remove our stitch marker, find, find our next stitch, then we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then pull that first loop through that second loop. Okay, to do a slip stitch and now we are going to okay so actually before we move on we need to put in the we need to put in our little eyes so let me get my glue gun all warmed up here okay so once um once you're ready we can now add on the safety eyes so you just want to grab your safety eye and um, let's maybe insert it maybe over here so this is round let me see one two three four five six seven yeah okay let's insert the safety eyes in round seven okay and we will count Okay, in the seventh, whoopsie, in the seventh stitch from the safety eye. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so with essentially six single crochets in between, in between these two safety eyes. Okay, so again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seventh one is that next one. Okay, 
Okay, there we go. I think that could work. Oh gosh, no. Placed it in the wrong row. Oh gosh. Gosh, imagine. Oh my word, imagine adding the hot glue and everything. That would be tremendous, honestly. Okay, so there is his little eyes. Okay, so once we're happy with the placement, we can go and insert the, the plastic washers on. Which, this can be a little bit of a tedious, tricky part, especially if you have, if you have long nails like me. <laughs> there we go. Let me just grab this other one here quickly and put this on. there we go that is what he looks like at the moment i think he looks so cute with his cute little eyes Hello. <laughs> okay so okay so this is optional you obviously don't have to put glue on the back of your safety eyes um but i feel like it helps with the security so i'm just gonna squeeze on a little dab of hot glue there okay so you don't have to do this obviously if you don't need to okay so now time to let that dry for a bit Anything with the hot glue gun, you're left with these like little strings of glue, which can be so frustrating, <laughs> so irritating to work with. Oh gosh. Okay, so I think that is fine now, so we can just continue, um, yeah, we can just now continue to, um, with this cute little jellyfish, we can continue to make our cute little jellyfish now. Yeah, so what we're going to do after we have joined with the slip stitch, we're not going to work in the back loops only. Okay, so we're just going to chain one for leverage. And then, so we're going to work. Okay, so we're going to work in the back loops only. So again, you see this V. So this is the front loop. The loop closest to you is the front loop. And then the loop furthest away from you is the back loop. So you're going to insert your hook in the middle of those two, two loops. And you're going to push your hook towards the back. There, that's one single crochet. Yeah, so that's in the back loop. So we'll do this whole row in the back loop. So again, insert into the next stitch in the back loop and do your single crochet. Then we're going to do a decrease. We're going to find our next back loop and then insert your hook into that back loop, then twist your hook down and hook that next back loop and then yarn over pull through those two loops and then yarn over pull through two and again one single crochet into the next two stitches so that's one and two again all in the back loop only yeah then again decrease over those two back loops so again insert the back loop there and twist your hook down and insert your hook into that next back loop and yarn over pull through two then yarn over pull through two to finish off your single crochet again one single crochet in the next two stitches in the back loop only and then do your decrease into the back loop only and repeat around and your stitch count should have gone down 
from from 24 down to 18 by the end of this round. Okay, so now that is what it should be looking like now after completing that round. So now as you can see, the, put, the stitches naturally like push to the front, if that makes any sense. There's now like a, like a ridge that's like formed around the bottom there, if that makes any sense. And now it's like kind of like pretty flat. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to place one single crochet into the first stitch. Okay, and now we can place our stitch marker back because we'll be continuing to work in the round. And then you're going to do a decrease again as normal. So now we'll be working into those, um, we'll be working into the stitch as normal now, no longer in the back loop. So it was just for that round, we worked into the back loop just to give the jellyfish like a flat bottom, if it makes any sense. Um, so yeah, again, just one single crochet into the next stitch and then a decrease. And by the end of this round, your stitch count should have gone down from 18 down to 12 by the end of this round. Yeah, so again, just one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease. And now we can stuff our little jellyfish head, so now we can remove our hook and then we can grab um, our stuffing as well as our blunt pair of scissors. Yeah, and you just want to grab, or not grab, well, <laughs> yeah, grab your stuffing and then just place your stuffing over your, over the top there and then just push your stuffing down in with your scissors We need a little bit more in there, I think. It's crazy how much stuffing these amigurumis actually take. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. You always think that oh, you don't need a lot of stuffing, especially for like these small things. The amount of stuffing that you put in these things, you sometimes it always seems to surprise me. Honestly. <laughs> Okay, we could do with a little bit more, I think. Okay, I think that is stuff enough now, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's good enough, yeah. Okay. So now moving on to the last decrease round, we can remove our stitch marker and insert our hook back into the stitch there. Okay, and now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because now we've stuffed the head. So now what we're going to do is we're going to decrease into each stitch around. So we're going to insert our hook into the, those front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two to do a decrease. And then insert your stitch marker back. And then find your next two front loops and decrease those two together. Oops. Okay, and you'll just 
repeat this around, just placing a decrease into each stitch around. stitch count should have gone down from from 12 down to 6 by the end of this round okay I'm finding it a little bit tricky there we go <laughs> I was gonna say I was finding a little bit tricky to work into that last stitch but I accomplished it <laughs> okay so now we can remove our stitch marker and we can slip stitch to the first stitch so again insert into that first stitch yarn over pull through then pull that first loop through that second loop to do your slip stitch and then we can snip off our yarn so leave a bit of a tail because we're going to sew that hole closed snip that off and then yarn over and sorry you don't even have to yarn over just pull up and out once you've slip stitched and then grab your tapestry needle and your tail end and thread up your darning needle and then we're going to sew this closed so now we're essentially going to do like a big decrease so you're going to find your front loop of the next stitch or the first stitch that you slip stitched into pull pull through then find your next stitch insert into the front loop of that next stitch pull through find your net the front loop of the next stitch pull through find the next front loop pull through find the next front loop pull through find the next front loop pull through now once you've weaved your tail end in through all of those front loops you're going to pull on your tail end nice and tight just cinch up that hole and what i like to do is i like to just insert my needle into the center of that um of those six single crochets there and pull out or come out at the top of the head and just pull that nice and tight pulling it down towards the bottom like that and then again now we're just going to weave in our tail end insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the head and you would just repeat that around so insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else insert your head into the same sorry insert your head gosh insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else yeah and you will just repeat this a few times until you're happy with it normally sewing in your tail end about three times is enough but I like to just do more just for security okay so now that is our little head done and now it's time to make the tentacles okay so we can put our little jellyfish head aside we don't need that right now and just stitch marker aside you also don't need that and then you can just grab so for the the tentacles so we'll be making two curly tentacles and then two like straight tentacles sorry not two three like straight straight stringy tentacles if that makes any sense um so for the curly tentacles i'll be making one in each color so one in pink and then one in purple um so because we were working in purple previously i'm just gonna work start with purple so what you'd want to do is chain 25 so to chain you're gonna make a slip knot so a slip knot is essentially um just a tight magic circle if you think about it like that um yeah so in order to make your slip knot you're gonna take your yarn wrap it around your fingers once and then the second time okay let me do that again so you're gonna take your, your yarn wrap it around your, your two fingers once and then the second time you're gonna cross over to form an x then you're going to uh, insert your hook underneath that front loop, pick up the second loop and then take it off your fingers and then pull tight to do your slip knot. Yeah, so 
So that's your slip knot. Then we can chain 25. So we're going to chain 25. So to chain, you're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. Yeah, so to do a yarn over, you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through that loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've gone six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Whoopsie. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five. Yeah, so now I have my 25 chains. This is what it should be looking like now. Yeah, so now working in the second chain from hook. So we're going to flip our chains over to reveal these back bumps. Okay, so this is the front of the chains so where you can see those Vs. See those Vs? We're going to turn them over to reveal these back bumps. See those bumps? We'll be working underneath those back bumps. Okay. So you're going to skip this first chain, that first chain, you're going to skip that because technically you can't really work into that chain. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to skip that first chain, go underneath that back loop, or that back bump of that chain. And you're going to do, um, you're going to do three single crochets into that second chain from hook. Okay, so into that second chain from hook, you're going to do three single crochets so that's one two and three okay and in each chain across okay so going into that next back bump of the chain you're going to place another three single crochets and then again into that next back bump you're going to place three single crochets and you'll just repeat that across Placing three single crochets into each back bump of the chain. And this is essentially creating like a little corkscrew. <laughs> it's called a little corkscrew for the tentacles. So it's like the little curly tentacles. But yeah, that is what essentially it is called if you don't want to have it as tentacles. Um, the little curly um, bits are called corkscrews. Okay, so now I'm finished with my little corkscrew tentacle. It may look something like this, but sometimes you might just have to twist the tentacle kind of like how it needs to be, if that makes any sense. So you just kind of like need to twist it a bit um, to make sure that it sits right. Okay. So now that that's over and done with, now we can our yarn so leave a bit of a tail to sew on um, to sew the tentacles to the head and then you're just going to yarn over and pull up and out so you're going to yarn over pull through and up and out <laughs> yeah so there you go you can make um, so there's our first tentacle now you can go off and make your second tentacle in the contrasting color and then I'll come back and show you um, how to make the other stringy tentacles and make any sense. Okay. Okay, so now I've come back and I've made two of my corkscrews now. So I've made 
um, the other one in pink. So I've got one of each color in the tentacle now. So now we can get started on the like stringy tentacles. So you'd want to grab your purple yarn again. So you'd want to do, okay, so you would just want to do um, two of one color and one of the other. So it's entirely up to you um, which color you want to do um, or how many, uh, how many strings and one color you want to do. So for me personally, I'm just going to do two light purple and one pink. But it's entirely up to you what you want to do. So you are going to start with a, a slip knot. So again, um, you're going to take your yarn, wrap the yarn over your two fingers once. And then the second time you're going to cross over to form an X. Then insert underneath that front loop, pick up that second loop and take it off your fingers and pull your slip knot tight. Okay. Then we're going to chain 15. So we're going to yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And again, we're going to turn over our chains to reveal those back bumps. And then again, you're going to find your second chain from the hook and we're going to do a slip stitch instead. So we're going to insert underneath that back bump, then we're going to yarn over and pull through that, that chain and then pull that loop through that loop on your hook. Okay, again you're going to insert into that next chain, yarn over, pull through and then pull that first loop through that second loop. Okay, and again insert underneath that front loop, yarn over, pull through and then, yarn and then pull that first loop through that second loop. And you just repeat that across. And I normally like to... The way I like to do my slip stitches is I like to insert, then yarn over, and then kind of like twist my hook down or twist my work down so that I can just pull my yarn over through those two loops like a single crochet essentially. And I find that makes it so much easier. So instead of going like one there and then there, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Especially for beginners so I like to insert underneath that front loop that first loop and then yarn over and twist my hook down so that I can pull through both of those loops simultaneously yeah so again you're just gonna slip stitch all the way across across your chains and you should have a total of 14 stitches 14 slip stitches if I'm not mistaken okay yeah and now after after doing those slip stitches you can end off so you can grab your scissors you can grab your scissors and then you can leave a long tail and snip that off and again you're just going to yarn over and pull through okay so you can go off and you can make three tentacles in total so you can make two of the purple and one of the pink or two of the pink and one of the purple it's entirely up to you but like i said i'm going to do two two purple and one pink Okay, so now I am back and I have completed all of my tentacles, as you can see here, of my three stringy ones and then my two curly ones. So now we can start sewing them together, or sewing them to the head. So you can just grab, like, I don't know, maybe the curly ones, and um, so you just want to take your yarn and thread that on. Okay. And then you just want to find a place on the bottom of the head and then just go down into that stitch and then into like that next stitch if that makes any sense on the head and then come up and so so there and then so into that next stitch of the of the tentacle and then come out on the head
And again, so into the tentacle again. And so down into the head again. So you just want to do this a few times until it is nicely tucked into the head. Oopsie. So I've just sewn it a few times there and then again when you're ready um, you can now uh, weave in our tail end yeah so you're going to weave it in by sewing it in the way we have done before so inserting a needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else Again, insert your needle to the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. Insert your needle to the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. And again, you will just repeat that a few times until you're happy with it. Okay, you can snip your yarn. And then you can weave in this other tail end. Okay, and then just snip that off. Okay, it actually looks a little bit <laughs> like a, almost like a, what's the word, like a tadpole almost. <laughs> okay, and then we can sew the other one on. So again, grab your tail end. And again, just sew this onto the body, kind of like in any sort of like position that you want, I guess. It's all up to personal preference where you want your tentacles to sit. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to have mine sewn over here. So again, I'm going to go back into the tentacle, and then into the next stitch of the tentacle, and then into the head, and then into the tentacle. So into the head, and then up into the Next stitch on the tentacle, and sew back down into the tentacle and down into the head. There you go. Brilliant. Okay, and then again, right, once you're happy, you can now weave in your tail end, like we've been doing before. Now it's time to sew on the stringy little tentacles. So you can grab one. Yeah, and then again, just kind of sew it on wherever you kind of want it to sit. So I'm going to sew mine over here. And again, I'm going to go back into uh, that stringy tentacle. If it will even let me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then again, sew back down into into the into the head, and then again, you just want to hard your tail in, or just sew in your tail in until you're happy with it. And the more times you sew in your tail in, the more secure. Um, the uh, the tentacles will be if it makes any sense the less likely it will just come out since you've weaved it in so many times into the head <laughs> okay once you're happy you can snip off the excess and then sew in the other tail end
Okay, so now the actual octopus is done. Um, and now I'm just going to show you um, how to add the little smile and then the whites around the eyes. And then the next step after that I'll show you. It's optional, you don't have to. Um, but I'm going to show you how to crochet like a little trimming around there, the head. To give it like a more of like a, an octopus look if you if you're happy with the way that it looks like this then you can leave it like that obviously and as i said it is optional so you just want to grab some white yarn so you just want to grab some white and a bit of black okay so we're going to start with the eyes Okay, so I actually like to use a smaller uh, sewing needle for this. Okay, so you just want to thread up your darning needle. Okay, so after you've threaded up your darning needle, I'm just going to insert my needle in and come out. I'm going to try and come out just underneath the, the eye. It can be a little bit tricky. And you just want to leave a bit of a tail. You have to leave a lot. Just a bit of a tail. I have quite a bit of long piece of yarn here. You don't need such a long piece. And I'll just scrap that I have lying around on my leftover project. Okay, and again, you just want to come to. So again, you just want to come to like the top most of this you just want to come out at the top of the eye there and again okay then when you just pull the yarn you just want to make sure that it just sits just behind the eye if it makes any sense like that isn't it just cute? It just makes it look a whole lot cuter. Okay, so again, just insert your needle just underneath the eye. Yeah. And again, just pull tight, and then there you go. Isn't that just cute? He looks definitely much cuter at the whites in there. Yeah, and then again, you'll just sew in your tail end as normal, just doing, um, sewing it in just a few times.
and then once you're happy you'll look something like this now what we need to do is we need to now sew on the little mouth so you can grab your yarn now you only really need a little bit you don't need a lot of a lot of black yarn you really just need a little bit yeah so i'm just gonna insert my my needle into a stitch just maybe like two rows below the eye oopsie yeah. and then you just want to maybe come down just one one row one one row down and one stitch across and then here we go look at his little smile isn't it just cute okay and then again, just weave in your tail end as you normally would. So if you want, you can stop now and um, have this as your finished, um, your finished jellyfish. Or if you want, we can add like a nice little trimming around the edge to make it more like jellyfish-like. So I'll show you now how we can do that. Okay. So if you do want to do this, stick around. Um, so what you want to do is you want to grab your purple yarn again. So you want to grab your purple yarn and then you just want to join your yarn into any of the the front loops left after um after doing that that round of back loops only so you want to join your yarn into any of the front loops remaining from around 12 and do one single crochet into the first stitch so i'm just going to join with the single crochet uh, sorry the chain one and then, so you're going to do one single crochet into the first stitch. Okay, so you're going to do one single crochet into the first stitch. And then a double crochet into the next stitch. Okay, so double crochet is yarn over. Insert into the next front loop. Yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two. Oopsie, you're going to yarn over pull through the first two. You'll, then you'll have two loops on the hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through the next two loops. Okay, and then you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, then you're going to find your next stitch, the next front loop there. And then do a single crochet in there. And then we are going to do a double crochet in the next stitch. So again, a double crochet is yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook, then yarn over, pull through the first two, and yarn over, pull through the second two. Then again, you'll do your single crochet into the next stitch. So find your next stitch and then do a single crochet. And again, I am um, I am working over my tail end so that I don't have to sew it in later. Um, but yeah, so this is what it should be looking like now. Okay, and then again, you're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch. So it's yarn over insert yarn over pull through you'll have two loop, three loops on the hook then you're going to yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over pull through the second two then you're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch Again, you're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch and then a single crochet into the next. Okay. 
and then you'll just repeat this around once I get back to the beginning And then you can join with a slip stitch to the beginning stitch. So find that first stitch and join with the slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over, pull through that first stitch and then pull that loop through that loop on your hook. Yeah, so that's what you should be looking like now. So you can snip your yarn. Pull up and through. And then you can weave in your tail end. So I'm just going to weave my tail end into that stitch that we slip stitched into and then I'm going to sew down to the base of, of my stitches here and then I am just going to weave in my tail end as how I normally would. If you worked over that first tail end like I have, you can just grab your scissors and just snip that off. Okay, so that is what our little jellyfish should be looking like. Isn't he just cute? <laughs> Isn't he just so cute? If you wanted to, you could have sewn in more of these stringy ones. Um, and made it look, look like very like full with tentacles. Um, yeah, and you could even like twist these to give it more of like a, like a natural look, I suppose. And you can twist these out if you wanted to. You twist them out and stretch them out a bit more. Okay, so that is our little jellyfish. Hope you're happy with the way he has come out. Hope you're happy with the way your one has come out. Okay, so now the last thing that we last thing left that we need to do is just add our keychain so we can grab our jewelry pliers as well as our little jump ring. Yeah, and then I like to just insert this jump ring into the center like that. And I like to just come out through um through either side of round one if you can see there and then you will just grab your keychain place that on and then just close up and then just close up your jump ring can be a little bit tricky to close from what i've noticed there you go i like to just squish this jump ring closed for like extra security you don't have to, but I found that <laughs> that a lot of the other keychains that I have made personally, um, like the ones that I have put on my bags and stuff before, the keychain actually comes off. So yeah, I like to close up that jump ring extra secure. Um, so yeah, that is our little jellyfish done. Isn't he just so cute? Like look at that. Oh, he's too cute. Isn't he? Oh my gosh, he almost rolled away from me, guys. <laughs> so yeah, isn't this just cute? So you can add more or less of these stringy tentacles if you want. You can add three of the, the curly tentacles if you want. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys liked that tutorial. So yeah, isn't he just cute? Okay guys, so that was it for today's tutorial on how to crochet this cute little jellyfish keychain. Isn't it just so cute guys? Let's look at it. 
because it's just so cute. Um, so yeah, that is it for today's tutorial. Um, I really hope that you guys managed to follow along and I really hope that you guys enjoyed crocheting this keychain as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, so yeah, I really hope that you guys learned something new from this tutorial and um, yeah, that is it guys, really. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share, it really does help out my channel. And uh, yeah, we cannot, I cannot believe it guys, we're almost at 2,000 subs, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers guys, can you believe it? That is crazy, it looks so beyond me, honestly. And I've noticed that there's a lot of you who watch my videos who aren't subscribed. What are you doing with your life guys? Come on, subscribe, join in the fun, join in the crochet community here at Tazzle's Crochet Creations. Um, we love having you here, we love we love having you guys here i don't know how much i need to express that to you guys honestly you guys are like my family that i've never met before <laughs> as funny as that sounds i don't know yeah um but honestly i want to get to know you guys more honestly at some stage i don't know when maybe we can do like a live q a or something like that i don't know but i would love to just i don't know interact with you guys more you know um but yeah anyway thank you guys for for those of you who have subscribed to me and again please subscribe you would not want to miss future tutorials i have a lot planned for this youtube channel for this year i'm going to try and publish at least two videos a year so already not two videos a year two videos a week what am i saying two videos a week so on a Monday, every Monday, I'll upload a video. It's my spin the wheel game series that I do every Monday. Where basically the wheel depicts which keychain pattern that I have a tutorial for on my YouTube channel. Um, it depicts whatever keychain pattern I have and turns it, well, it doesn't turn it into me, but <laughs> the wheel depicts which keychain pattern I turn into little mini keychains, like that big. <laughs> So if you want to see me struggle crocheting with fine thread and a 0.60 millimeter crochet hook then join me every Monday you wouldn't want to miss it and I have tutorials every Wednesday um, showing you how to crochet all sorts from keychains to to garments and things like that more so accessory wear like this bandana so this um this band uh, this bandana is my Barbie inspired bandana it has it's pink with white daisies all over it so there's a tutorial for this on my youtube channel as well as the bobbin size belt and the bobbin size bralette so if that inspires you or interests you at all then please go check out those videos you wouldn't want to miss it and um yeah that is it for today's tutorial on how to crochet oh my gosh this this jellyfish does not want to face the camera like, look at her just does not want to face the camera <laughs> Okay, that is it for today's tutorial, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It really does help out my channel. And it is three things that you could do to help me and will also benefit you. So anyway, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. And happy crochet, guys. Bye.